Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. Welcome to Truth Be Told, a place where I want you to come, hear truth, and grow. Today, I am so honored to be joined by an incredible award-winning director, Matthew McCauley. He has directed the new film, Undefiled. Matt, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Jeannie. I appreciate you having me on. You know, um, just watching through some of the clips that people can see online, it's clear the movie is not playing games. It's getting straight to the heart of some things that really need to be talked about. Um, I want to start there. You are the director. Mm -hmm. What made you really feel compelled to uh, get behind a project like this? Yeah, it, it's, it goes back about five or six years. Um, a friend of mine, Dr. Kevin Wisman, who's a Christian psychologist, uh, deals mostly with patients uh, in this realm, in this subject matter, uh, talking about pornography, um, sexual abuse, betrayal, trauma, uh, that this sort of thing. This is his most, mostly his, uh, his realm of practice. We were having coffee one day and he was talking about this sort of thing and um, getting to know each other a little better. He started throwing out statistics at me. Uh, 68% of church going men have a regular engagement with uh, pornography of some type. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, if that's not bad enough, 50% uh, of pastors report, and this isn't like, um, you know, the, uh, this isn't the Barna a survey actually prying into their life. This is them actually reporting anonymously. Yes, 50% of pastors have an issue with pornography. And um, those statistics hit me really hard because I had never thought about it. Go, you know, fast forward a little while. And I was talking with some other people about it. And I kept getting a lot of from Christians, uh, people in church, uh, churches, this sort of thing. A lot of pushback saying, I don't understand. It's just pornography. What's the problem? Ooh, ooh. And this seems to be a, a very common misconception, a very common thing among even Christians these days. I don't, it's personal, it's private. It's, it's, you know, it doesn't hurt anyone is not the truth that's just not it at all and so um at the time all that was kind of happening we were looking for the topic that god would lead us to for our feature film wow. <laughs> and you know as he does that's not the road we had gone down we we'd gone down a completely different road and uh he just said no this is what you're gonna do and yeah yeah well thank you Thank you for being obedient because, um, you know, you're so, you're so right. People do not see the severity of pornography, but if I could use this word, it's, it's sort of a gateway into worse. And I know the film really, it does a great job at really showing that where pornography leads to adultery and then, uh, even worse to, to looking into sex trafficking, which, you know, um, is really heavy on my heart. And um, the statistics behind that is just repulsive. The uh, the child per the child trafficking rate is insane, and all of that is really uh, started and spurred on by pornography. And I think if we can even get Christians to just distaste pornography in such a way because they understand what it leads to, it'll probably help them break the addiction or whatever it is that's compelling them. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear more. I know you have actor and former um, uh, professional baseball player, uh, Bradford Haynes, as the star of the film, which I think is amazing because um, he's lending his voice, his celebrity and all of that to such an important topic. But I grew up in the music industry. I've been in the entertainment industry for over almost 30 years, I feel 
super old. Um, <laughs> but hey, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I grew up in the secular entertainment industry, so I know exactly the environment that celebrity and fame, you know, it, it pull, thrusts you into these things. So the fact that you guys get into the nitty gritty, you get into trafficking, you get into, you know, hiring, you know, for sex and all of this stuff in the film, I think is amazing. Can you talk a little bit to that having Bradford um, and then just, you know, what did that contribute to kind of this topic? Yeah. Well, I mean, on kind of a, a lighter note, Bradford and I had been friends for a while, and um, he, of course, uh, had a baseball career background. He he played uh, in the Dodgers organization. Um, he played in the big leagues in Japan for a while, even you know. And so, um, he loved baseball. Uh, my I love baseball. Um, the Me too. Our, a good friend, Dr. Kevin Wisman, who who we consulted with, and who's the executive producer. He loved baseball, so it kind of was like let's make a baseball movie, <laughs> but the demographic we're trying to reach as well, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it will catch you. Oh, a baseball movie. I'll watch a baseball, movie, you know? So, yeah. so that's part of that. But, um, Bradford, a good Christian guy, uh, family guy, family man, um, you know, uh, loving family man who said, yeah, this is important. We, I'll, I'll do this with you. And um, that's amazing because you're right. A lot of people in certain uh, groups in the filmmaking industry wouldn't have touched this. In fact, uh, there was um, other people in the filmmaking industry that we approached early on. Some of them said, I don't understand. It's not a problem. And some of them said, don't touch that with a 10 foot pole. You'll ruin your career. Mm -hmm. That was all motivation for us. <laughs> we knew, you know, God had already told us this is the right thing to do. So at that point, it's like, yeah, confirmation. This is the right thing to do. So. You're my you're my kind of people. I love that. <laughs> Another thing. So let's pull it back a little, um, a little more, right? Because uh, addiction to pornography doesn't just start there. It, it doesn't start with, oh, you know, I have a scratch. Let me itch it. It usually is deeper than that, which you also tackle in the film. And it's identity. It's an identity issue. Yes. It's an identity problem. I'm not a man, um, but I know myself when I'm not strong in my identity, when I'm uh, going through something where, you know, my my foundation is shaken, I, it's you can easily be taken away, tempted, yes. you know, by the enemy. But um, talk to that as a man, because I know it's so important. I'm a pastor's wife. I should have said that. Um, so we we see people all the time, yes. you know, to your point with your statistics earlier that are struggling, you know, with some form of addiction. And for the majority of the time, it is a, a sex thing. Yeah. Um, talk, though, to identity, right? Because people would never think my addiction to pornography or me wanting to sleep around as a married man or woman or me wanting to pay for sex that has nothing to do with identity that's just i want to i have a fit i want to get a fix talk to that that's super important i'm really genie i'm glad you brought that up the the topic of identity because at its core and, and i think a lot of people don't catch that right away at its core that's what the movie's really all about it's about identity and, um, you know, uh, the main character, Mitch, uh, without giving too much away, but, you know, the main character, Mitch, has a rough childhood. He was basically told he was worthless as a child. A lot of people will probably identify to that, maybe not to that severe degree, but but yeah, they'll identify it in some way. And uh, and so his whole life, he's looking to how can I meet? How can I be somebody? How can I mean something? How can I be important even to the point where I want to be a superhero. I want to be a hero, you know, and um, he's constantly searching for that. And so are we, you know, even us, us that don't have, maybe have a uh, severe addiction or whatever. A lot of times we're just like, well, what can I do to make myself this or that, you know? And so uh, in, in a lot of the cases um, and it doesn't have to be porn, it can be drugs, it can be alcohol, it can be overwork. It can be overeating. It can be anything, mm -hmm. as you well know. So uh, a lot of those cases, it's I'm looking for something. This is going to fill that need. 
Hmm. And then of course it doesn't. And so, um, you know, obviously that leads to all kinds of bad consequences. In this case, porn was the addiction. And so family issues, um, in real life, you know, I've sat in on groups. I've been privileged enough to sit in on, on therapy groups with guys dealing with this. Their families are torn apart. I, I know a man whose family wasn't torn apart, praise the Lord. Um, but it just happens. And so, yeah, it's, it's identity. It's, it's where it all starts. And the movie really wanted to, we wanted to catch that. I love that. And I love that that is um, what you're tackling. It's funny, you know, in ministry, um, you know, pastors usually are looking for topics all the time, you know, like, what can we discuss? But like what we have found is the root of everything we ever discuss really is an identity. If we can help people be secure in their identity in Christ, then they will develop how God wants them to. And, you know, uh, be able to battle these, these pitfalls, these temptations. Um, I, uh, you know, I thought about the Super Bowl and how the Super Bowl is the number one, like in America, in this country, uh, the Super Bowl time is where trafficking is through the roof, you know? Yeah. So I thought how how great it was that you had that in the film where you see the other players talking about trafficking and just how and it's it's just really sad how um how how people just get trapped in these things in those scenarios. So I just wanted to commend you for that, but also highlight the fact that that is actually really accurate. Um, yes. and it's unfortunate, but it is accurate. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference uh, between guilt and shame? Well, you're really, you're hitting the nails on the head today. This is great. Yeah, um, that is just wonderful. Actually, undefiled, I'll, I'll back up from that question just a little bit to lead in. Um, undefiled has an eight-part video series uh, produced by our partner ministry, Pure Desire Ministries. And um, it takes up right where the film leaves off and, and it incorporates the themes of the film, even talks about the film and the themes in the film. So there's a big difference between guilt and shame. And that eight part video series really brings that out, really makes because uh, it's something that very few people understand. Um, guilt says I've done bad. Uh, shame says I am bad. And there's a huge difference there. And so uh, with shame. It's constantly telling you, I'm a horrible person. I am not a good person. Um, and and the, the biggest deal there is I will not recover. I will not get any better. There's there's no possibility that I will, I will be anything more than this. That's shame. Mm -hmm. Guilt's kind of the, the entry point to that. So shame says if I am this right now, there's really no reason why I shouldn't just continue with what I'm doing. And of course, that's a humongous lie from Satan. He tells us lies all the time. He breathes that in our ear and says, you just, just, just go ahead. And that, you know, that might be drugs. It might be porn. It might be alcohol or whatever. Uh, who knows what it is, but it's just keep going because you know what? It's this, this is the only thing you've got. This is the only thing that's going to get you through. That's the scenario. And I think a lot of people in all kinds of situations, all kinds of addictions would directly relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really unfortunate. Um, that's where people get trapped, you know, in the shame of it all. But I think it's also important to feel guilty when you do wrong um, and not also just pacify it. Like you said, some Christians or some people that you've approached were like, I don't even see the problem. Right. I got to tell you that I've, I've counseled couples who uh, they go to counseling or therapy and their therapist has told them to watch pornography to help improve oh. their marriage. And um, you know, and I've, I'm like, Oh man, you didn't realize the door you were opening to right. the enemy. Perhaps you're not tempted by that, but you know, yeah. you have to protect your spouse. So it's really, it's really serious stuff. Now, for the people that are afraid, 
So we're talking about this, they're hearing it, they know this is what they're struggling with, or they know this is what their spouse is struggling with, or, you know, they're afraid to kind of turn it on or, or watch it. Uh, what do you say? How do you uh, compel them to to turn this on? Because this is was right. made for them, right? Yes. But you yes. know how it is. If they're stuck in shame, yeah. uh, they're, they're not, they're afraid to. How do you get them over the threshold? That's a really good question as well. Uh, we've had we've screened it in churches before. We've screened the film in churches before, and um, some of the pushback we get there is, "This isn't a Christian film. How how dare you show this in a church?" Well, of course it's a Christian film. It was built on prayer. The the film was built on prayer. It was built on uh, the desire to glorify God and to reach people. Right, and so um, that is not a, a, a a good argument. However, I think what the core of that is they're reacting to embarrassment and um, some superstitious type of, we don't talk about this in church, which is really the core of the issue, right? Mm -hmm. If we were talking about it in church with a loving family, maybe these things wouldn't be, maybe those statistics wouldn't be as bad as they are. Um, you know, if, if a guy could go to another brother at church and say, look, this is just between you and I, but we, I've, I've got this issue and I just need to talk to somebody about it. And, you know, and that's the opening of a conversation. But if the, the, the stigma in church is, well, we're just, we don't, we don't deal with that. You know, we don't talk about that. Keep that to yourself, deal with it yourself. Talk to God about it, not us, you know, mm. then that's a problem. Um, so I, I think getting past that, I, I that's one reason, though, also that we created this as a narrative or a fictional feature film and not a documentary, not uh, some other media, was because it's approachable. Most people that will sit down and watch a, a two-hour film, you know, almost everybody will say, yeah, I'll watch a film. You know? and, and so it's very, very, very approachable. And the story is such that you kind of do get involved and you want to see what happens in the end, you know? And so it carries you along like a, like a normal film would. And I think that's, that's the catch. That's the, well, oh, yeah, just go ahead and watch it. It's a good film to watch. And, and that, you know, and then whether they like it or not, whether they're triggered or not, I, I, I know people that it just kind of like just lit them up, you know? And, and I said, well, by design, you know, and so, mm -hmm. um, but they think about it and that's the key. And so do you want them to, to be redirected? I know you have livingundefiled.com where they can see the eight part video series. Um, but yeah, so I, I love that. And, and I'm grateful that even though some churches are not willing to go there, you're using your gifts and your talents in a ministry form to still do it. I, I say this to uh, filmmakers all the time. I really do believe that one of the, the prominent forms of ministry in this day and age will be this form of storytelling. We know Jesus was the greatest storyteller yeah. ever, um, but I'm a millennial and, you know, I know all the ones you know, <laughs> that follow, it's going to be really hard for them to sit through other things, but a movie yeah. is that safe place. So thank you so much for uh, being willing to push past, even push past the naysayers to, uh, to release a film like this. Um, what, what's God's, what's God's message here? For, for undefiled, what's the good, I, you know, like you said, it's identity. Uh, it is, um, it doesn't matter what you or the world or your father or your mother or whoever told you you were supposed to be or you weren't doesn't matter none of that matters god gave me a saying when i gave my life to him that was basically nothing behind you matters and mm -hmm. i think that's that's a key it's you may have had a horrible life you may have had a horrible childhood um but jesus doesn't matter he doesn't care it's like let's just go forward from here i'll take you let's build your life forward from here. Let's go. Come on. I'm waiting for you. And, and that's, that's, the, I think that's my takeaway from undefiled. Yeah. It's about a lot of, um, you know, the nitty gritty of the, of the topics and, and like we've talked about, but 
in the end, that's really the broad thing right there is, is just he's waiting. He's just like, yeah, and, and I don't care about the past. It's horrible. I, I, I understand, but I love you anyways. And let's mm -hmm. just go, you know, and um, and that's him. And, and that's why we love him so much. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's the imagery of walking into darkness, you know, I mean, out of darkness into light, like walking over the threshold and and holding Jesus's hand, you know. Uh, really beauty being turned uh, ashes being turned into beauty so yes, it's yes. it's really awesome thank you so much Matthew I um can't wait to just really I have people I want to direct to the film yes. specifically um I'm like Lord give me the the right way to say it because I'm like they need this film you know <laughs> but I, I'm grateful that I have something I can send to people as a ministry tool uh what's next for you are you um are you praying about the next thing Yes, we are as a group. We have a group, uh, that church that prays over this. Um, uh, yeah, we're looking for the next project, several uh, different kinds of projects, actually. So just like this one, I, I think God will drop something on us. We probably weren't expecting. So. Yeah, and it'll be needed and for such a time as this. So thank you so much for your yes, for your obedience. And um, I really appreciate it. The movie is well done. The quality is amazing as well. I should say that I know people hear uh, faith anything and sometimes they get scared. But um, I just thought this was so well done and so needed. Thank, Thank you, so Jeannie. I appreciate that so much.